I want you to speak about romantic relationships between women and men. Why this kind of commitment? Should I change for someone I love? I think I will be frustrated if someone asks me to change. Can lovers grow up without problems in their relationships? Thank you, Muhammad, for the questions. There's a lot of questions here, so I'll talk about each one of them separately. Let's begin from the first one. Do lovers really need to commit? Is commitment conditioned with love? Is love conditioned with commitment? That depends on how we define that specific kind of love. And I know that the language is too poor to describe the phenomena, but we really, really need to speak specifics here. When I speak about commitment, it's not a synonym with love. It can be with love or without love. There's a difference between what we call unconditional love and conditional love. When I love someone unconditionally, it means that I will allow them make their choices and that will not influence my love towards them. On the other hand, I'm also free to make my choices and uh, they would love me regardless of my choices. Now, this kind of love is very rare because we like to control each other. And we like to tell someone, if you don't fulfill my expectations, I will not love you. Emotionally, maybe not intellectually, but emotionally. But we really need to differentiate between unconditional love and unconditional respect and unconditional credibility. If I love you unconditionally, it doesn't mean that I trust you unconditionally. I love you unconditionally and I will allow you to live in the results of your choices in the reality that you created. That doesn't mean that um, I need to pay for you. That doesn't mean that I'm going to pay for your mistakes. That doesn't mean that I'm going to save you. I will allow you to live in the results of your choices, including the bad reality that you've chosen for yourself or the good reality that, that you've chosen for yourself. That's how unconditional my love is. There's a difference between unconditional love and products exchange. Giving a product for free is not an expression of love. Though many of us have learned in our houses, in our families, to express love through money, through food, through vacations. Someone wants to express love, so they invite you to a ski vacation. Or they bribe you with some money. So we learned to buy love through those symbols, objects, jewelry, cars. Love is not that at all. And unconditional love is for sure has nothing to do with that. Now, when it comes to conditional love, that's also not commitment, though it has some kind of similarities because people demand from you to commit. And if you will not commit, they will be very angry with you. If you don't fulfill expectations, they might punish you. So, this love is so conditional, the conditional love, conditional love is so conditional that if you don't fulfill expectations, if you don't do this, and if you don't do that, and if you don't do what they want from you, they will not love you anymore. On the other hand, you will fulfill expectations in order to be loved. Most of our exchange in our familiar environments, unfortunately, including in families, is built upon very conditional love. So some mothers don't want to set their sons and daughters free because they want them to stay next to them in the house. So sometimes they threaten that they're going to suicide or they threaten, oh, shame on you. I made this for you. I'm your mom. And all those shame and guilt and uh, accusations are made to make people ashamed of themselves and to feel, make them feel guilty in order to manipulate their actions and to make them do things that are in alignment with the expectation of the one in charge. Now, commitment and loyalty have not necessarily to do with love, 
but more with survival. I need my pack. Let's say uh, if we are speaking about Wolf's pack, we need all members of the pack to be loyal to the pack. Otherwise, we will face difficulties to hunt together. In order to survive, we can't defend our pack anymore. So we need this kind of commitment and this kind of loyalty to the pack in order to survive. But this belongs to a different category because when it comes to loyalty and commitment, those are traits that come from the uh, objective exchange in order to achieve success in teamwork, in the military, um, in any organization that aspires to achieve success, we need those traits of commitment, dedication, loyalty, especially when it comes to long-term success where people can get easily exhausted. We need those traits. But love is very subjective. I love. And it's not an objective that is defined. It's subjective experience. I love something that someone else might not share the same emotional experience as I do. If the lovers share also other aspects or share, share also other fields, like they're also business partners or they study in the same university and they work together on the same project. Or, so they need to commit for the long term to achieve success. Now, marriage is a, a legal contract. It's not a spiritual connection. It's a legal contract that is uh, necessary for the bureaucracy and the government and the state's organization stuff. And, but it's not a spiritual connection. However, after achieving this kind of commitment, it will also influence the uh, emotional exchange. As we spoke in the past, an exterior change will influence also the interior and the other way around. So when it comes to marriage, it's commitment not to keep love. Love doesn't consider papers nor contracts. Love is either, either there or not. But this paper is a long-term contract because when you decide to become one entity in front of the law and you have kids and you have much more responsibilities so they need to find who's responsible of what so they make this contract but this has not to do with love okay so we have unconditional love conditional love and then commitment and loyalty and other traits and they can be here and they but they don't have to be here we don't condition love with anything but we condition success with commitment Love and success are different things. You know. So if you succeed to combine this and this, enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. But uh, we really need to get rid of a lot of narcissistic traits to be able to let go and not to exchange love with anything. Love is either there or not. Unconditional love. And many people will love conditionally because they know that um, I love this person because they can give me something. So if you know, you might go to some uh, networking events and you see that people are looking for someone to give them a job and they show they're loving, they are alive, uh, but actually, or someone, anyone who has an interest, they're shining of, out of love, and but they're actually putting themselves in that state of being because there's a condition. Not because they're loving, just because of who they are. A machine of love. It's not the case. Setting ourselves free from that place and moving towards unconditional love can set us free. Simply, we have not we're not responsible of anybody's destiny. On the other hand, we are fully responsible of our destiny. We are free find someone else in the same state of being, connect with some common objective, define that common objective, commit, work on it, 
be gods on earth. Now, if you should change for someone you love, first of all, change is not a bad thing. For example, when you go and you want to buy apples, you pay, let's say, uh, one dollar or two dollars or two euros. So now you changed. You have apples with you, but you have two euros less. You changed because we change every moment. We change from moment to moment to moment. We are not the same person as the person that we were a couple of moments ago. What kind of change? Change towards success. Change towards happiness. Change towards love and commitment and loyalty and all the traits, the constructive traits. Is that change that you're talking about? Or you're talking about change in the direction of losing your character, become more and more insignificant, become more and more for granted. That's a different change. You can't treat both changes with the same word, though our language is too poor to explain the phenomena. But this change is different than that change. What kind of change are you talking about? So, change in the name of growth, change in the name of survival, that's essential. Otherwise, life is meaningless. But change in the other direction is losing the course of life, losing why we are here in the first place. And of course, that kind of change would leave you frustrated. Of course, if someone asks you to change, this might be a challenge because the change needs to come as a free choice. You choose to change because you want to change. If someone wants to change you, then what's the point? And many times we want to change people. You know what? Even people who face pain and we want to heal them and we want to help them. We want to change them, but they are not ready to change. And if I try, if we try to force change, we might create more damage. And uh, on the contrary, not only that I would not want to force anyone to change, but that person in the name of change, he or she, need to make the first step, not me. It's their life. I love them so unconditionally that I will not change them. And if they need change, I will love them as well, but I will not do it for them. They need to do it for themselves and in case that they would need your help, you can choose. Depends on where you are. If there's a, a common objective or when it comes to taking advantage of you, you decide if you want to help or not. But forcing someone to change, this is not part of the unconditional love path. So uh, change is not a bad thing, but in which direction? Can lovers grow up without problems in their relationships? Problems happen for many reasons. First of all, there's the interference of society. Parents-in-law, parents, many people when they see a loving couple that are achieving their goals and they are setting an example it reflects to many people their lack of knowledge or their lack of success. And there will be a lot of challenges. Suddenly the mother wants to prove to the daughter-in-law that she's in charge of her son. She's, she's the first priority of her son. Or the father or the daughter wants to show that. To... Anyway, so many people from outside begin to influence the relationship for personal gain. Not in the name of contributing or encouraging or helping the couple but for personal gain, pure personal gain. When we say problems, do the problems come from outside? Do the problems come from inside? From where? What kind of problems? And how to deal with those problems? Of course, it requires not only to grow up without problems in, a, in their relationships. They both need to be intelligent enough you know what, even if one person is intelligent, that's not enough. Because there will be always someone that is messing up 
and there's always the other the intelligent will be cleaning the mess and this is this uh, kind of interaction will put the disadvantaged always in a painful position always in a place where they need the, the disadvantaged the intelligent always needs to clean the mess it's a potential script I'm not saying that this would what would happen but choosing the partner if the choice built on free choice that would be great if the choice is made out of living the moment and being present in the moment with that partner and enjoying the exchange without trying to fulfill any expectations just following the inner compass and it makes sense without trying to make any justifications intellectual justifications following that path that would lead to that relationship that would be great and relationship is dynamic it changes from moment to moment the question is are we really present enough to observe what's going on and to exchange and to love and to live together in a dynamic manner are we present enough or there's a lot of filters and a lot of concepts and a lot of entities interfering in the relationship or it can be a lot of things a successful personal romantic relationship that is also combining let's say commitment and loyalty that can maintain or sustain this relationship for the long run this is uh, not something that can be easily achievable in our society today especially in our narcissistic society that is built on uh, very short-term subjective objectives one night stands parasitic mindset I just need something and I will run away immediately we're not empathic enough to see who we are dealing with you meet a woman okay she's looking good but who that person is you know that emotional wealth and that emotional intelligence and that amount of empathy that allows us to see and connect emotionally genuinely with each other this is something that we can't intellectualize and we can't come to that place with so much prejudices and misconceptions it's a challenge it's a challenge anyway I hope I could help answering your question Muhammad thank you so much for the question thank you everyone for staying with me I'm Shreli Jabarin. ciao